Watch out for fake endorsements. It's January 8th, 2024, and these are your headlines. When it comes to the endorsements listed by candidates running for public office, well, voters beware. This is a really, really wild story. So State Representative Glenn Rogers, he's running for re-election for House District 60. Well, he lists a slate of endorsements, like many candidates do, on his campaign website. Among the Republican office holders purportedly throwing their support behind his campaign were Representative Roger Williams, uh, State Senator Drew Springer, and State Representative David Spiller. So what's the issue? Well, all three of them say they've not endorsed Rogers this cycle. So Roger Williams says his endorsement was issued back in 2022 and that he would ask Rogers to remove the endorsement from his website, that's what he told us. Senator Drew Springer, meanwhile, told us that he would not issued an endorsement this cycle at all and would make a decision over the next week or so as to whether or not he would choose a candidate in that race and which one. David Spiller said Rogers' listing of his endorsement could be a misunderstanding. He told Texas Scorecard that he's tried to stay out of all the other House races, given that he has his own contested race to run in and went on to say that it may have been that Glenn thought the endorsement came from a previous race, but I don't even remember what I may have done two years ago on that. I don't recall. Now, the endorsements, in fact, the entire endorsements page, has since been taken off of Glenn Rogers' website. And while Rogers' campaign did not respond to a request for comment to clarify the situation, the page has been actively updated throughout the campaign cycle. So some have looked at this and said, well, maybe it was a page that was completely ignored. It's from two years ago. Uh, you know, this, it's not a page that they've updated. But that's not true. Because when Go- Governor Greg Abbott endorsed Rogers' opponent, Mike Olcott, in November, Rogers went on to remove Abbott's endorsement from that same web page. So this web page has been updated. He took off Abbott's endorsement. He left the others up. And he's not the only person who has potentially some some fraudulent endorsements on their campaign websites. Just looking at a few other candidates, I noticed today that Drew Darby, a state representative, similarly lists an endorsement by Governor Greg Abbott at the top of his campaign endorsements page. Now, Abbott had endorsed Drew Darby in previous elections, but he endorsed his opponent, Stormy Bradley, over a month ago and yet he is still touting that endorsement. We're going to continue looking at these. Remember, the uh, the Republican primary is March 5th. Well, if they can't win at the ballot box, a lot of people are turning to the courthouse. That's right. A candidate for the Texas Supreme Court is trying to remove his conservative opponent from the ballot. Supreme Court Justice John Devine, considered by observers to be the court's most consistently conservative member, is up for re-election this year. Challenging Divine is Brian Walker, who currently sits on the Fort Worth-based Second Court of Appeals. Walker's father is Scott Walker, a member of the Texas Court of Criminal Appeals. Not the former governor of, uh, I believe it was, Wisconsin, right? In order to qualify for a place on the ballot for the Texas Supreme Court, each candidate must obtain at least 50 signatures from each of the state's 14 courts of appeals districts. The election code also states that a person may not sign the petition of more than one candidate for the same office in the same election. So, in this filing, Walker alleges that Devine is deficient in the El Paso Court of Appeals, also known as District 8. Walker is seeking emergency relief from the Supreme Court to remove Devine's name from the Republican primary ballot. This printing of ballots begins on January 10th. Devine compared the move to efforts by Democrats to remove former President Donald Trump from state ballots. He told us if they can't do it fair and square in an election and let the people decide, then they'll try to figure out another way without campaigning, without sharing their political philosophy or judicial philosophy with the public to make an honest decision based on merit instead of trickery and sandbagging. He also added that he was confident that they were correct and their arguments would prevail, he added. Walker, meanwhile, said the petition speaks for itself. He said that that is the law and party leadership refused to follow it. And he was compelled to pursue legal action at the Texas Supreme Court. Went on to say, obviously, I would have preferred for party leaders to follow the law, but they didn't. Now, this emergency hearing is happening right now in the Texas Supreme Court. We record this this afternoon. So I expect 
potential movement on this issue in the coming hours or days. Did you know you can watch Texas Scorecard on your TV? If you have a Roku or Apple TV device, download the free Texas Scorecard app and get conservative Texas news you can trust. Lastly, Texas Attorney General Ken Paxson has joined a coalition of attorneys general to support former President Donald Trump's appeal to the U.S. Supreme Court in order to appear on the Colorado ballot after he was removed last year. The court brief filed on Friday argues that the Supreme Court's immediate intervention in the case is required because the situation has the potential to spark widespread chaos across the country. The brief says most obviously it casts confusion into an election cycle that is just weeks away. Beyond that, it upsets the respective roles of the Congress, the states, and the courts. Now, regarding accusations that Trump incited an insurrection, this coalition, uh, coalition also argues that the Colorado court created a definition of insurrection that was vague. Now, at issue is the Colorado Supreme Court's decision to utilize the Constitution's insurrection clause and January 6th to disqualify Trump from serving as president. The insurrection clause bars a person who has sworn an oath to defend the Constitution and then engaged in insurrection from holding public office. Paxton was joined by attorneys general from a wide swath of states, including Indiana, West Virginia, Alabama, Kentucky, Alaska, Louisiana, Arkansas, Mississippi, Florida, Missouri, Georgia, Montana, Idaho, Nebraska, Iowa, New Hampshire, Kansas, North Dakota, Ohio, Wyoming, Oklahoma, South Carolina, South Dakota, Tennessee, Utah, and Virginia. Wow, what a coalition of states. The U.S. Supreme Court has agreed to hear Trump's case on why he should not be removed from the Colorado ballot. The Colorado Secretary of State has placed Trump on the ballot due to the appeal in the meantime. Oral arguments are set to take place on February 8th of this year. For more of today's stories, head to texasscorecard.com.